Let's talk. I just want to get right into it. Okay, more trouble for Lindsay Lohan. Her computer was stolen. Um, I be- well, she believes, I believe that she said at the Shanghai airport. And it's uh, reported that it was full of personal information that she doesn't want released. I roll tooth suck. <laughs> what? I, you know, I, what? Well, according to TMZ, Lindsay's computer is full of nude photos. I roll tooth suck. We've seen her naked before. I mean, we, you know, we, we've seen it. There's, there's really not, you know, I mean, okay. Anyway, next. <laughs> Lindsay reportedly made a list of the men that she slept with. Uh, well, there are 36 of them, which I thought... I thought that number would be a lot higher. Are you serious? So, 36 men. Um, a few of the names on the list, just a few, um, are listed. I wasn't shocked at any of these guys. But I'm going to give you a couple of the names that, that my, um, my uh, Hot Topics producers were gagging at. They gagged at Justin Timberlake. I'm like, really? So you honestly think that Justin Timberlake went from Britney Spears to Jessica Biel with no stops in between? <laughs> really? And, and I'm not suggesting anything, but... Um, you know, based on how Lindsay acts and the things that she's been dealing with, I bet you she's easier to get with than, than a lot of us girls. You know, she's not a bad-looking girl, this Lindsay Lohan. She likes to be out in the nightclubs. Um, she's got a really sexy voice. You know, she's got, like, that husky, that husky, you know, <laughs> voice. And uh, she looks like she'd be a lot of fun. Uh, for a quick tumble, you know, hit it and quit it. So Coachella kicked off this weekend, and Leonardo DiCaprio was there getting cozy with Rihanna. Ooh. Everybody gets cozy with Rihanna. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Well, he's announced that he's ready to retire. I don't think that that needs to be an announcement. I... <laughs> Sandra Bullock is giving up on men. Oh. Yep. And now she's into... <laughs> No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I love tricks and I love jokes, in case you couldn't tell. When I was young, I would love a whoopee cushion. My parents would have their dignified friends over the house and they'd sit down and and that was me. The back area of Spencer's gift was my favorite place. I'd be the one buying the fly in the ice. And also put the mouse on the floor with the invisible string and you pull it along. (laughs) I love tricks. Phaedra in Atlanta is officially divorcing Apollo. So she's going to divorce him. Of course, they have the two uh, sons. Um, One is three and one is one or something like that. Um, She's probably going to file for solo custody. I'm not sure about this. I mean, she hired a lawyer, a real lawyer. She's not... (laughs) She's... (laughs) She's smart enough not to represent herself. <laughs> Look, Phaedra, n- nobody's using you as a lawyer not even to fight a traffic ticket. <laughs> All right, Madonna. Oh. Well, here's the problem. You know when you have teenagers and they can see through your bull mess and they know when you're trying to really try too hard to get along with them and then they take advantage of you? Yeah. Well, I do. <laughs> So, Madonna's trying really hard to be the fun parent. But, you know, Rocco is uh, now 15, and he's been fed up with her strict rules, and he went to live with his fun dad. Now, Madonna reportedly, because her career is now over, she's got time for Rocco. Uh, Excuse me, what did I say? Her time is over? Her career. Her career? (laughs) (laughs) I meant nothing by that, madam. The beehives are on the swarm. But aren't they always? Like, you can't say one thing about Beyonce without the beehives. Those are her super fans, for those of you who don't know. They're attacking Rita Ora, but look. No, well, you you like that? Okay. Rita Ora, who I still have no idea who this woman is. (laughs) I mean, I think of her as a British socialite, like a beautiful girl who walks the red carpet, for no reason. (laughs) You know, they're like, what projects are you promoting? She's like, no, I'm just here. (laughs) Beehive, relax. 
okay? Just please do not swarm over here because I, I got my bug spray ready. Anyway, back to Rita Ora and the Beehive. So, look, pictures have surfaced of Rita Ora hugging Jay-Z from behind. Now, see, now, a hug is not just a hug, everybody. I venture to say a hug from behind is way more intimate than a hug from the front. She's all short, so she's up in his neck breath. Yeah. And, and her, grabbing, him. And grabbing him. Yeah. Yeah. Rita Ora knew exactly what she was doing, and it apparently pissed the beehive off. I'm sure, you know, <laughs> Beyonce might stay peeved because women come around him and they don't know how to act, and as opposed to swatting them, you know, like, he should have taken his, her face and threw it over a, uh, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, stop. Rita Ora, please don't clap back at them. You know they will sting you. <laughs> All right. And Beyonce, I mean, uh, Bill Cosby, don't get beside yourself, because long after Prince is gone, and Beyonce and Jay-Z are still together. We're gonna circle back around and still deal with you. <laughs> Suzanne, you know how it is. Yes. Sometimes people feel that when, when a big story happens, yes. that you're gonna forget about their story. Right, we're not forgetting about you, No, no, about that's you, what Bill. pen and paper are for. <laughs> nope, I take my ginkgo biloba, I remember a lot. <laughs> the man is losing his eyesight. He wasn't born with blue eyes. That's... <laughs> you know, you know how. <laughs> all right, well, well, you all are laughing, so apparently you know what I'm talking about. You know how you have that uncle or that aunt or that grandma who you swear has the most beautiful blue eyes? It's not only until you're older you realize it's the glaucoma <laughs> and the film. Taylor Swift vowed to never show her belly button. Like, she does a midriff, you know, a sliver. She does a midriff, but she went into this whole thing in an article for one of the women's magazines saying, oh, I will never, ever, ever <laughs> show my belly button. Like, I don't, I don't want people to know whether it's an innie, an outie, a flatty, or whether it even exists. Well, just three weeks later, she was on vacation in Hawaii, and apparently, she decided to expose her belly button with a bikini. Oh. There she is. There it is. Oh. Nobody cares. Oh. <laughs> Nobody cares. Let's talk about Amber Rose. Oh. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Uh, you don't care? <laughs> new year, new hot topics. Yeah. You don't care about Miley? No. The next season of The Voice has started filming, and there's already drama behind the scenes. Ooh. Adam apparently, allegedly, is finding Miley to be annoying. Um, Miley is annoying in my mind. <laughs> and I think that, like with Miley Cyrus, the, you don't look at pretty first. With Adam Levine, I think that women look at pretty first. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, the, the I, you know, the music and whatnot, okay, fine. But Miley's music is so more relevant. Gwen, I know that you sing and I know that you sew clothes, but <laughs> there's something more relevant about Miley. And who's the other judge? Christina hey. and Blake. Christina who? Aguilera. Oh. oh. I don't want to know that you all are fighting. I mean, look what happened with American Idol. That's pretty much when it jumped the shark in a big way, when Mariah and Nicki Minaj came on, and then Idol kind of fueled, you know, they stoked the fires, and the girls took the bait, and now what were we watching? We were watching four judges that, you know, and Ryan, that two of them, <laughs> <laughs> two of them can't stand each other. I bet you our friend over here, Randy, was on Mariah's side because that's his former manager, and Keith Urban's just happy <laughs> to be out of the house, according to what I read. <laughs> Love and hip-hop star Stevie J <laughs> is denying being a deadbeat dad. <laughs> he takes care. That's not the picture I like, though. Come on, yeah! Ah. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Mimi revealed that she's in a lesbian relationship with a girl named Chris. <laughs> and there's Chris. Well, um, Mimi, uh, Mimi's ex and baby's father, uh, Stevie J, isn't happy about it. Oh. First of all, the way he treats women, he, you, Stevie, I'm sorry. You don't even deserve an opinion on what color lipstick I wear. Yeah. Much less who I choose to sleep with. Anyway, so Stevie talked to TMZ, and he says that he is not okay with their six-year-old daughter being raised by two women. Oh. Well, Stevie, you got a lot of nerve. Okay. Are you okay with your six-year-old daughter being raised by my Puerto Rican princess? but not exactly a mother type. Jocelyn, are you okay with your six kids and your four babies' mothers? Are you okay with owing at one point in 2014 over a million dollars in child support? Are you okay? Okay. And I'm fine with people loving who they love, but can we just focus on Mimi for a moment? She went from having wild sex with her ex-boyfriend on a shower rod and putting out a videotape of it while having this daughter to now being in a same-sex relationship, in my opinion, for a plot line. Oh. <laughs> we all agreed in the meeting that this yeah. is a plot line, right? Absolutely, like, absolutely. She's not a committed, dyed-in-the-wool lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing this for a storyline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for this season. For this season. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, Mimi, nobody cares about you and your dumb plot line. Hey, I wanna say congratulations. You, uh, this is your 10th year of your television show. Yeah, congratulations. Amazing. Uh, I gotta tell you, um, I never thought we'd make it this far. Uh-huh. You know, when we first got started, I said, all right, if I'm just on for three years, you know, I will mind my own business and go on about my life. But it takes so much. You know, you've been on for years. Yeah, but less than you. I, I am four years. Yeah, but you're a white man. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I feel like nobody ever mentions that, and thank you. Well, the, the world is built for you. It is, yes. There is clear racism and racial bias in this country. There really is no excuse, no matter what pocket of this country you live in, regarding teaching your children about racism. And what I learned growing up in Ocean Township, you girls, um, back there, is that, um, you know, everybody is created equal, but, but the world is still a white place. My black parents would always remind us that we are black in a white world. And, and you know, make our choices carefully, be careful, we're judged even harder, and all those other kinds of things. By the time I was nine and a half, I had already been called in, in Ocean Township. Mm -hmm. My brother, uh, excuse me, my, my son is nine and a half, and he's never been, I'm sorry, I should have said the N-word. No, the, um, it's but, your show. But my, <laughs> my, my, but my son is nine and a half and has never been called the N-word. And that is shocking to me because we live in a totally different time. You would think it would have already happened, but that means that the kids that he goes to school with, the kids that are around him in the neighborhood, the parents are really doing a, a fairly decent job. I don't know, racism sucks. And then we move on. But never forget. Hold on. <laughs> Every time I talk race, I need a drink. <laughs> a lemony. I went to Samsung. They have their Hope for Children Gala every year. I had a terrific time. I saw John Legend. He was there. Uh, John Legend was there. I told him I didn't think that he had it in him to bring it as, as a judge. And he said, no, 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 no. Please, please. You, you say it like you mean it, but with a smile. I said, right, John? I said two things to him. I said, I don't think you have what it takes to bring it like a judge because you're such a nice man. He said, no, 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 no. Don't mess around with my craft. You mess around with my craft, and you're messing around with my, my situation. So he's going to bring it. And then I said, John, you look really good. Have you had work done? <laughs> and he goes, he doesn't miss a beat. He goes, no, not yet, but I would. <laughs> I haven't seen you since the last time uh, we talked, which was in my head, when I decided that we can't be friends in my head anymore. <laughs> Why did you break up with me in your head? Because when I got this talk show, uh -huh. 
you thought Hot Topics was distasteful because oh. you're so classy. Oh. Yeah, he thought, and so I, and then he became judgmental. I'm, and so, I am very classy. Though. Yes. You, you have to admit. No, no, you, you know, you were the first man friend in my head. Yes. I, I might never. You told me that when you used to be at, on the radio. On the radio. Yes. I, I invented that term for a celebrity or somebody that you don't really know, but you feel as that if you, you knew them better. That you felt like you hung out with them in your head. Yes. Yes. And you, come and you used over. to tell me all these things that me and you used to do together. They didn't sound like anything that I actually do, but. Well, now that. <laughs> but it's cool. But now that now that you've chosen such an outgoing woman to be your bride, you. Yeah. Are a lot more fun out of my head than you are in my head. Yes, yes. <laughs> I bet you she likes hot topics. Yeah, she uh -huh. does. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence tripped on the red carpet. <laughs> um, you remember last year she tripped up the steps going to receive her award. <laughs> <laughs> At people falling, and her, and her friend was able to stand up. If I fall on any of my friends, <laughs> they're all going down. Oh my god! Oh my god! I read the blogs sometimes, and people wonder why I stand. Wait, get this long shot. Why I stand like this when I come out? Because I need my kickstand. You know, I got a little bit too much going on with my body. I start to sway like a like a building if I stand like this. So I ha I need a kickstand. That's why. Because you're not gonna get me falling. Sneakers? Who falls off sneakers? <laughs> Me. This is a radical dating experience, but it will allow you to date in the most honest way possible. Yay! I didn't even get to buy you a drink yet. I, I know! Right? Is it too late to run? <laughs> ah! I mean, everybody, this is what TV has come to. This is a show that I will not be watching. I have no interest in watching this show. You know, most people aren't perfect when they're naked. And mature people understand that, you know, to, because we're not perfect, that's why we have to fall in love or fall in like with somebody's mind and their sense of humor and their accomplishments and things like that. Then once you get down to do the nasty, you know, even though one boob might be bigger than the other or, or, or you know, his penis might not be what you like, but, but you've already fallen for him up here. And mature, mature people understand I'm trying to be mature and have a mature conversation, but they're laughing. I'll talk to you. Uh, look. Mature people understand that, that you fall for somebody warts and all. There's only one thing that would make me run from the bedroom. And I'm not talking about it here. I'm talking about it in Vegas tonight. And I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how hot your body is. There is one thing that would make me say, oh, hell no, I'm out. So look, there was this guy, nice looking. His name was Skip the Honey Dip. And we went out and we had a good time. He was off keeping, like he was a grown man so he had money to take me to some place other than a fucking slice of pizza. Remember how college was, stupid college guys, boom. We went out like four times. He was trying to feel up and push up and everything like that, but I'm now, stop, me, no, stop. <laughs> Finally, I relented. Tonight is the night. So he's feeling up and I'm taking his lead and he's pushing my head. <laughs> Excuse me. Look, girls, you know the head push. Yeah. Guys, that shit is so rude, but anyway. Yeah. He's pushing my head, I get down there, I'm smelling something I've never smelled in my fucking life. I, I will never forget the smell. And I had no idea, I never run into this shit before. It was like a turtleneck sweater on a dick. So I'll call it the turtleneck. At first I didn't know what to do, my mouth was all over something with a lot of skin. Then he took control and started pulling it back. Well, the smell got worse. There was something soft on there, like rope for cheese. Ew. Lint. There was lint oh on his dick, God. hiding behind that turtleneck. Yikes. Well, I will never. And you know what? And she
shout out to, I know there are at least a handful of men in here with an uncircumcised dick. There are a lot of men in here who don't try. like big titties and a flat ass. I know I'm shaped like a capital P. So, you got me, but let me just tell you, I will never, ever deal with the turtleneck again. That's not my flavor. <laughs> Here in the purple chair, you know, on the TV in a nice proper dress, I can only give you small glimpses of my real humor. <laughs> <laughs>